The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland has collapsed. All indications from what we know so far are that this was not a terrorist attack or an attack of any kind. President Joe Biden has pledged that the federal government will provide the funds to rebuild it. And yet we are seeing conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory about the collapse of this bridge for many of the usual suspects. And as is often the case, we are led to ask the question, what's in it for them in trying to convince others that this was a terrorist attack? And the answer is quite simply, it feeds the pre existing agenda that they've already determined is what they're going to talk about in the absence of being able to bring forward any coherent, substantive, or beneficial package of ideas for helping the average person. Let's start with some examples of this. It's important to remember that much of what you are going to hear, there is no evidence of whatsoever. We will talk about facts related to the collapse, including, for example, that the U.S. Coast Guard has suspended its search for six individuals who are lost. We will talk about that later on or on the bonus show if we don't get to it. But understand that what what I'm about to play for you, there's no evidence for any of this stuff. But these things are getting millions and tens of millions of clicks and views. It started very quickly with Maria Bartiromo on Fox News attempting to connect the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore to the so-called wide open border in an attempt to somehow blame Joe Biden. Let me also get your take on what's going on in terms of world affairs. Uh, the White House has issued a statement on this saying that there's no indication of a nefarious intent in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long, uh, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, we all have to stand together. We have to say that that it takes 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate. There you go. We got to stand together. No actual evidence. Understand it. Zero actual evidence linking the bridge to the border. And in fact, I would I would go further. One of the few presidents in recent history who really has the credibility to say, oh, this is something we can deal with. And by the way, I've been putting forth infrastructure funds to not only repair roads and replace lead pipes, but also to make our bridges modern and get up to date on maintenance so that these sorts of things wouldn't happen. If anything, we should be looking to Biden and saying, hey, it seems like Biden's right about the need to pour money into some of these things rather than, well, Biden's open border must connect to this somehow. Right. Right. Here's Matt Schlapp on Newsmax saying he's not an expert, but drug addled employees and covid lockdowns may be to blame for the bridge collapse. But what kind of questions do you want to see answered, Matt? Well, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the right and the covid issues. And you this is still because of covid lockdowns that basically didn't exist. Look, what, whether you look at our air traffic controllers where we have critical mission problems with filling slots, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm no expert on what's going on on the seas. But all I would say is, is that uh, if you talk to employers in America, they'll tell you that uh, filling slots with employees who aren't drug adled is a very huge problem. So I'm making no <laughs> specific charges here because we don't know. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, anybody who flies in America can see that you're constantly waiting on a tarmac somewhere for some crew to show up. There's mm -hmm. more uh, maintenance problems than we've ever had, which I think are euphemisms for the problems. By the way, everything he's listed so far are problems at corporations. But I think the key line here was I'm no actual expert in this. And of course, the idea that it's always too soon to talk about politics when it comes to gun safety. It doesn't matter if the last I mean, look, in the United States, it's never been too long, actually, since the last mass shooting, because they happen constantly. But it's always too soon to interject politics. It's always too soon to inject partisanship. And yet here, when we have one side that doesn't want to do infrastructure spending, one side that's doing it, they still somehow find a way to immediately. I mean, this was before the Coast Guard search was even over for potential survivors. And he's injecting politics into it by blaming COVID woke, uh, COVID lockdowns or wokeness 
We'll hear DEI blamed in a moment. Here's Fox News is Jesse Waters, and he says to his viewers, don't fall for the official story on the bridge. OK, well, the bridge has never had train tracks, so I don't know what he's talking about, but there will be more where that came from in the next week. Made up stories, misdirection and blame games, but don't fall for it. We have to get to the bottom of this. A cargo ship hasn't taken out a bridge in decades. And a ship, as far as we can tell, has never sustained a power failure before a bridge knocked down. We need answers. And someone has to pay. This 30- is always the if it hasn't happened before or recently to this particular ship, then it must be made up. No, I don't believe anything I'm being told about covid because it's been like a hundred years since something like this happened. Well, yeah, it's called a hundred year pandemic for a reason. It happens roughly every hundred years. No, no, no. It doesn't sound like anything I've lived through, so it can't possibly be real. But they put forward no evidence whatsoever, only circumstantial questions and conspiracy theories on Newsmax. Victor Davis Hansen blamed the Baltimore bridge collapse on diversity hiring code for brown people. We don't know the exact relation to cause and effect, but we do know this, that the world is much more interconnected. It's much more fragile than it ever has been. It's much more sophisticated and it demands an ever greater level of expertise. But just at the time that we're building bigger and bigger and more dangerous ships or we're, we're assembling longer and longer trains that derail, like we saw at East Palestine with more and more toxic, we're not upping our game as far as increasing the level of expertise and especially Eric meritocracy. Ah. So we're not hiring necessarily the best people. We used to say we're going to hire the best people regardless of their color, their skin, their sexual orientation. Now we're saying, well, we may uh, hire the best people, but more importantly, is their ideology or their ethnicity or their gender or their sexual orientation. And unfortunately, by the way, ethnicity, ethnicity. If you're going to be a known racist, you should at least get the word ethnicity right. But anyway, ethnicity or ethnicity, notwithstanding, no evidence whatsoever that DEI diversity hiring or any of this hiring gay people had anything to do with what happened in Baltimore. And then here's Laura Ingraham on Fox News defending the conspiracy theorist saying, listen, It makes sense that we'd be getting all of these conspiracy theories. But why is it that so many Americans following this collapse believe that the Biden team isn't telling us the whole truth? Axios today bemoaning the situation, writing that misinformation runs rampant after Baltimore Bridge collapse. True. Theories about whether hostile actors were involved, questions about economic terrorism, and even wilder speculation I won't go into tonight. But... These ideas don't spring out of nowhere. They grow and they fester in situations where either the facts are hard to square with reality or where those in charge themselves have proven to be not credible. There you go. I mean, listen, what we're being told by people we can't trust doesn't square with reality. So it's natural that people would be skeptical and weaponized disinformation would be spread. It's simply natural. A couple more. These are not videos. These are from Twitter. Andrew Taint and Alex Jones piling on with Taint saying, quote, this ship was cyber attacked. Lights go off and it deliberately steers towards the bridge supports. Remember, what we know is it lost power and kept steering in the direction it was going. He goes on. Foreign agents of the USA attack digital infrastructures. Nothing is safe. Black Swan event imminent. And Alex Jones quoting taint and adding looks deliberate to me. A cyber attack is probable. World War three has already started. So, of course, the truth is officials have said there is simply no evidence that this was intentional. There is no evidence that it was an act of terrorism. This is all being investigated. It appears the ship lost propul- propulsion uh, filed a, a, a mayday. And uh, all evidence right now is consistent with that official story. Now, if that changes, then I will bring it to you. But this is all what happens when you create a vacuum of sanity. You eliminate sanity, you eliminate facts, you eliminate any policy. And all you have is, I don't know, there was a bridge collapse. How about we try to blame it on Biden and the hiring of supposedly unqualified gay and black people? That's what it comes down to. And I know it sounds crazy to hear it summarized that way. 
But that's fundamentally what it is. There is no evidence for any of the claims they are making. If any such evidence should surface and uh, I, I'm not making a pun, but if any such evidence should surface, I will let you know. All right. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has made the explosive announcement that riding alongside him as his vice presidential running mate will be Nicole Shanahan. I didn't know who she was either until a few hours ago. Nicole Shanahan is uh, actually the Washington Post has a piece. Who is Nicole Shanahan? Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s running mate. Um, Nicole Shanahan is a Bay Area tech lawyer and a mega donor. And uh, I believe the wife of one of the Google guys. She made a big donation previously to the PAC supporting Robert F. Kennedy Jr. We are going to hear both from RFK Jr. and from Shanahan herself about this. But this is fundamentally a play on Silicon Valley money. Is this someone that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. can have alongside him, which will maybe help to unify a group of donors that is often split between Democrats and Republicans, uh, tech people and Silicon Valley folks? Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. Here is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. giving us some of the rationale for selecting Nicole Shanahan. I wanted someone with a spiritual dimension and compassion and idealism and above all, a deep love for the United States of America. And I found all of those qualities in a woman who grew up right here in Oakland, the daughter of immigrants who overcame every daunting obstacle and went on to achieve the highest levels of the American dream. So that is why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next Vice President of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. Right. <laughs> All right. So a very small crowd, uh, like a really, really, really small crowd. It was um, disproportionately media. And other than some floor space, the room was basically empty. So in terms of as a proxy for enthusiasm on this, I just don't know. Here's Nicole Shanahan making statements uh, using words and sentences. As recently as a year ago, I really didn't think much of Bobby Kennedy because I didn't know much about him. Right. All I had was a mainstream media narrative that was effectively telling me horrible, disparaging things. <laughs> But then a friend who's here today pulled me aside and she said, Nicole, please do me a favor. Just listen to an interview with Bobby Kennedy, just one. So I did. I did. And then I, I, I listened to another one and then another one. And I recognized that the person who I was seeing in these interviews was the exact opposite of the media slander of his character. I saw a person of intelligence, of compassion, and of reason. I saw a fellow lawyer who had committed himself to finding the truth and fighting for the environment and for people. I discovered a person who speaks out on issues that, even though they are critically important to human health and welfare, are consistently ignored by our government. I assume she means the vaccine stuff. So listen, this all has a bit of an uncanny valley feel to it. I don't know how else to describe it. I think it's all extraordinarily bizarre, but I do think we should not laugh off the potential impact of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Because when look, we, we look at polls that include third parties, uh, Kennedy is getting anywhere from 15 to 18 percent. Now, the case he makes that won't get you to victory. In fact, it, he's not leading even a single state. But the dynamics that he presents are as follows. If you have a state where it's 40, 40, 20, 40 for Biden, 40 for Trump, 20 for Kennedy. Kennedy only needs to get to 34 in the sense that if Biden ends up with 33 and Scrumps ends up with 33, that's 66. 
That means 34 percent gets you a plurality. And in states where you don't have to get to 50, that gets you the state. So to go from 20 to 34 again, this is his argument to go to 20 from 20 to 34. I just need to take seven from Biden and seven from Trump. And now I go from 20 to 34 and I win the state. That's his argument. And it is an accurate argument arithmetically, but it's not really striking me as plausible in any particular state. So sometimes these ideas make sense generically. Yeah. I mean, listen, to go from 20 to 34, you got to pull seven from one guy and seven from the other guy. And next thing you know, you've got 34. You won. They've each got 33. The problem is which state has seven percent of the electorate that is planning to vote for Biden ready to go to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And then also has seven seven percent of the electorate that's planning to vote for Trump ready to switch to RFK Jr. And does hiring Nicole Shanahan as his vice presidential running mate get him closer to pulling seven percent from Biden and seven percent from Trump? in any state. So at the same time, we have 15 to 17 percent. If he gets that would already be a record going back decades for a third party candidate. That's already big. On the other hand, I can't think of a single state that he actually has a shot at winning. And then the bigger picture, of course, is even if he doesn't pull seven more from Biden and seven more from Trump, who does he seem to be helping? And right now we've gone back and forth on this. Right now, the math points to he is taking more from Biden than from Trump as of this moment. And so his presence, we've got to be honest about it. I would love it for, the, for it to be different from the numbers I'm seeing. The presence of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. third party hurts Biden and helps Trump as of what I'm seeing right now. Let me know your thoughts. Does he have staying power? Will he stay in until November or is this positioning to get out with some kind of plan? I want to hear from you. We'll take a quick break and then the show will ro roll on after a very quick word from today's sponsors. Don't forget that the best way to support the David Pakman show is by becoming a member, which gives you access to the daily bonus show, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive of every episode dating back a really long time and plenty of other awesome membership perks. Go to joinpacman.com. Joinpacman.com. The David Pakman Show continues primarily to be funded by our audience. You can get the full David Pakman Show experience, which you're not getting if you're hearing this message right now. By signing up at joinpacman.com, you will get a members only feed of the show every day. If you prefer video or audio, both are available, as well as an extra show every day called The Bonus Show, where I am joined by producer Pat and we discuss more of the news of the day. You can sign up at joinpacman.com and you can, of course, use the coupon code Save Democracy 24 if you prefer a discount. I believe the normal prices are perfectly reasonable. But uh, we do make discounts available, and the current coupon code is Save Democracy 24. There's also other great perks you can read about at joinpacman.com. She's done, folks. NBC has reversed its decision to hire former RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel after serious blowback from on air staff at NBC and MSNBC. And people in the audience as well. I know people in my audience emailed NBC and said, What are you guys doing? As I've said before, the problem is not having right wing voices on air. I think every network should do that. Reasonable right wing voices, even extreme right wing voices, as long as they are not normalizing those who sought to jeopardize and destroy the basic democratic pillars and institutions on which this country is based. And that's what Ronna McDaniel tried to do. As RNC chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel participated in the attempt to put together a fake slate of electors to try to make Trump the president despite losing the election. She hesitated and refused to say for long periods of time, Biden won and he won fair and square. And then NBC hired her and NBC and MSNBC on air stat, talent were saying, wait, now we're supposed to interview her like she's just a normal person. So The Washington Post now reports. NBC reverses decision to hire Ronna McDaniel after on air backlash. 
The network's biggest stars had lambasted the hiring across MSNBC's lineup Monday, with more critiques expected this week. Now, I know that there are going to be the usual low information suspects who think they've got the big brains who are going to say, see, they've taken away her free speech. This is not about free speech. This is about no one has a right to be a paid contributor on these networks. And NBC and MSNBC can use whatever standard they want to determine who should be a paid contributor. They thought this was a good idea. They now believe it is not. And if it's because they realize we don't want our entire on air talent to be pissed at us, that's valid. If it's because they had a change of heart and realize maybe we don't want an insurrectionist in our payroll, that's absolutely fine as well. They're not discriminating against Ronna McDaniel because of her race or her gender or her religious beliefs. They've made a business decision, a business decision that right wingers say businesses should be allowed to make and in fact argue is the most important thing. Now, if the government were suppressing her speech or some some such thing, that would be a different story. As a reminder, here are a number of the di different statements made by N NBC and MSNBC on air staff uh, over the last couple of days about this hire. I'll be joined by former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel in her first interview since stepping down as party chair. In full disclosure to our viewers, this interview was scheduled weeks before it was announced that McDaniel would become a paid NBC News contributor. This will be a news interview, and I was not involved in her hiring. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this because many of our professional dealing people wondering what the music is. This is a this is a super cut from the recount and the recount has apparently added a drum beat to this. But the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, mm. have been met with character assassination. But we weren't asked our opinion of the hiring, but if we were, we would have strongly objected to it. NBC News, either wittingly or unwittingly, is teaching election deniers that what they can do stretches well beyond appearing on our air in interviews to peddle lies about the sanctity and integrity of our elections, but that they can do that as one of us, as badge carrying employees of NBC News. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. She literally backed an illegal scheme to steal an election in the state of Michigan. That is the type of experience that Ronna McDaniel brings to the table. And that experience does not get us to a deeper understanding of anything in the public debate. I want to associate myself with all my colleagues, both at MSNBC and at NBC News, who have voiced loud and principled objections to our company putting on the payroll someone who hasn't just attacked us as journalists, um, but someone who is part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. So this is not about there shouldn't be dissenting opinions among the ranks. This is not about these should just be exclusively left wing networks or any of it. As many of you know, uh, there are uh, all sorts of diversities of views that are present on a number of different networks, some more than others. But this is the idea that it's a bridge too far to put M NBC and MSNBC on air talent in a position to have to pretend that this is a normal person to have providing analysis. Give us the motivation for trying to subvert democracy, Rana, and take a pretty paycheck for it. So I have no issue whatsoever with Rana McDaniel being interviewed on NBC, MSNBC or anywhere in the way that I would interview her, which is as former RNC chairwoman who tried to subvert democracy and went along with one of the most vile and disgusting schemes we've seen to hold on to power when power is supposed to be something you earn democratically rather than something you take. So it's the right decision to get rid of her. It's not a first minute, First Amendment issue. It's not a free speech issue. And we will see what comes next. You know, she'll probably get a job at Fox or Newsmax or something like that. She's going to do fine. Don't you worry. But NBC making the right decision. And for those saying NBC only made the decision because of pressure. Yeah. OK. I mean, listen, I don't see NBC or Fox or MSN. I don't see any of these platforms as inherently guided by morality and ethics. I see them as inher inherently guided by profit and political expediency. It became inconvenient to have Ronna McDaniel there. We know it wasn't over ethical concerns that they got rid of her because they weren't concerned about that when they hired her. But it's still the right decision. And that's what matters. 
very quietly, not on TV, but in a fundraising email. One of the lead proponents of the Biden impeachment inquiry is admitting we're not going to impeach Joe Biden. It's over is what James Comer is finally admitting in a fundraising email. Now, I think it's really important to understand that he's doing this quietly and for fundraising purposes. He's not saying it in interviews. He's continuing to press forward as if this is a serious investigation and maybe Joe Biden will be impeached. But let's take a look at this fundraising message that went out. What do you think they would do if we impeached Biden? It's clear that Democrats will choose their party over their country and the truth at every turn. They should be ashamed of themselves. That's why I am preparing criminal referrals as the culmination of my investigation. When President Trump returns to the White House, it's critical the new leadership at the DOJ have everything they need to prosecute the Biden crime family and deliver swift justice. This is the best way to hold the Bidens accountable for their crimes. And by the way, this is a fundraising email. So what is he effectively saying here? He's saying, listen, if we did impeach Biden, Democrats have a majority in the Senate and they're not going to vote to convict Biden. So really, what's the point at the end of the day? But I don't even really believe that's the explanation, because if Republicans believed that impeaching Biden, even if he got acquitted, was politically useful to them, they would do it anyway. So this explanation doesn't even make any sense. The real reason they're not going to move forward and impeach Joe Biden is they are calculating it's not going to help them win in November. And it has the potential to backfire, which is something I've been saying for a year as this has been going on, which is they can be as determined as they want to impeach President Joe Biden. But enough of these Republicans realize that if it's transparently an impeachment for no reason, if there is no evidence, no proof, no high crimes and misdemeanors, no criminality, no potential criminality, no hypothetical criminality that a lot of the American people, not the hardcore MAGAs, the hardcore MAGAs are going to say this is great. We got him, but it risks backfiring badly and hurting them in November. That's what this is about. So the new line from Comer is we're going to do criminal referrals. Notice, by the way, he doesn't say what the crimes are. He doesn't say who committed them or when or what proof they have. Even that's nonsense. But he is now trying to raise money by saying the impeachment is not going to work because of partisan Democrats. But what we're going to do is set things up so that Trump's DOJ will have everything they need to criminally prosecute Joe Biden. Now, I'm not a betting man, but I would be willing to bet that that also doesn't happen. Why? because there is still no evidence that Joe Biden committed any crime whatsoever. When they are asked what are the crimes, they don't even know. They vaguely say influence peddling or uh, you know, you know uh, bribery. Well, who bribed? What was the bribe? What was the what was in exchange for the bribe? So I don't think they're going to prosecute Biden either because there's no evidence that he committed a crime. But James Comer now privately, he's not yet saying it publicly, but privately is saying uh, we are not going to be impeaching Joe Biden. And it's it's almost funny how regularly Republicans will accuse Democrats of doing what they already do, because this is yet another example where Republicans have been accusing Democrats of weaponizing the Department of Justice against Trump. Biden's involved in all of these prosecutions of Trump and Comer is straight up saying our goal here is to weaponize the future Trump DOJ against Joe Biden. Do you have evidence? No. What crimes did Biden commit? We're not sure. But it is once again an example of them admitting they plan to do the very thing they accuse Democrats of doing. They don't even have evidence of improper behavior. Forget about the standard of criminality. They haven't even even demonstrated yet that Joe Biden has behaved improperly in some way that might not even be criminal. They have nothing. Comer knows it. He's backtracking. He's asking, how much money can I maybe fundraise on future criminal prosecution? I think the answer is going to be a lot less than he would hope. If you value what we do at the David Pakman show, remember to support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash David Pakman show where you can get access to behind the scenes videos, the daily bonus show, 
the commercial free daily show. You can support the show for as little as two dollars a month. Check it out at patreon.com slash David Pakman show. Donald Trump is now selling Bibles in another desperate move to raise money and pretend that he's religious, which we know he isn't. And that's fine. But he has to pretend to be religious because of the people that support the guy. This it almost seems like a parody, but it is all too real. Donald Trump posting yesterday to Truth Social, quote, happy Holy Week. Let's make America pray again. As we lead into Good Friday and Easter, I encourage you to get a copy of the God Bless the USA Bible. Here is Donald Trump struggling to read the teleprompter, offering Bibles for sale. It's a very special Bible. And as you know, Trump is deeply spiritual and the spirituality just is exuding out of his pores here. Take a look at this. Be partnering with my very good friend Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. Right. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard. Wow. To keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence and the pledge. And of course, uh, casual viewers will recognize a lot of strange things in the video. Donald Trump rocking back and forth and side to side, looking confused, struggling to read the video done in many cuts so that Trump can record one line at a time if necessary. His eyes almost completely swollen shut. Every aspect of this is crazy, especially the fact that Trump is now selling Bibles of allegiance are all part of this. God bless the USA Bible. And it's just very important and very important to me. Yeah. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Yep. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights you have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. Is that right? I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion <laughs> in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. All Americans, even non Christian Americans, need Bibles in their homes. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important. It's mm. so missing, but it's going to come back and it's going to come back strong, just like our country is going to come back strong. Right. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro God. We love God. And we have to protect Love anything that is pro God. We must offend God in the public square and not allow. I'm actually enjoying seeing how many things can a guy who knows nothing about the Bible or religion say. And I guess it's a lot. <laughs> how the media or the left wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. Right. Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out and pray that God will bless America again. I'm so waiting for the actual sales pitch now. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Right. Pray, get educated, get motivated and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very right. special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. 
I wonder how these things go behind the scenes where someone comes to Trump and says, sir, we need you to do three minutes about the Lee Greenwood Bible that we're selling. What? I'm selling a Bible. Yes, we're selling a Bible for sixty dollars. Don't worry. You get to keep most of the money. All right. Put it on the teleprompter. Let's do it. By the way, for anyone who even remotely is considering the fact that Trump maybe actually likes the Bible, here is the guy who claims his Bible's his favorite book, struggling to answer just a simple question about a Bible passage. You will notice, by the way, even though Trump, this is from, from when he was first running for president in 2015, 2016, despite refusing to say anything about the Bible because he doesn't know anything about it. He does seem way more articulate. And that decline that we've been talking with medical experts about very noticeable. Take a listen to this. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse I, that I, means I a just, lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me. But I don't want to get into specifics, even to cite a verse. That no, you like. I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old Testament guy or a New Testament? Guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible. The whole Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. Right. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. So okay. Trump's speech, of course, dramatically declined, as medical experts have found relative to this interview in 2015, 2016. But there is a, a super religious guy we are led to believe equal between the New and Old Testament and wouldn't want to get into it because it's all just so personal. So in any case, if you believe any of this nonsense, if you are moved by Trump's supposed deep spirituality, uh, you now have a Bible. You can, you can even monetize the Bible for Trump. You can simultaneously get your sacred text and put money in Trump's pocket if that's interesting to you. And of course, all reeking, reeking, reeking of desperation. Donald Trump has been gagged, choked badly by Judge Merchan after attacking the judge's daughter on Troth Central. Oh boy, this guy just can't get out of his own way. The New Republic reports Trump wins himself a gag order. After unhinged attack on judges family, Donald Trump just keeps getting slammed in his hush money trial in New York. Um, this came after Trump attacked the judge Juan Merchan <clears throat> and his family in a post on Truth Social targeting the judge's daughter. The order came at the request of Manhattan D.A. Alvin Bragg forbids Trump from speaking publicly about courtroom staff, prosecutors or any family members, comments about jurors are prohibited and comments about witnesses are prohibited. The order does allow Trump to attack the prosecutor himself. At least he'll have that. So here is the post from Trump. Judge Juan Merchan, a very distinguished looking man, is nevertheless a true and certified Trump hater who suffers from a very serious case of Trump derangement syndrome. In other words, he hates me. His daughter is a senior executive at a super liberal Democrat firm that works for Adam Shifty Shift, the Democrat National Committee, Dem Senate Majority PAC, and even crooked Joe Biden. He was recently the judge on an unrelated trial of a long term employee, elderly and not in good health. This judge treated him viciously, telling him, You either cooperate or I'm putting you in jail for 15 years. He pled and went to jail for very minor offenses, highly unusual, served four months in Rikers, and now they are after him again, this time for allegedly lying. Doesn't look like a lie to me. And they threatened him again with 15 years if he doesn't say something bad about, quote, Trump. I love when Trump puts his own name in quotes. He is devastated and scared. These country destroying scoundrels and thugs have no case against me. Witch hunt. Now, I want to remind everybody about the two tier justice system. OK, Trump and MAGA say the two tier justice system is that Democrats are treated one way. Left wingers are treated one way. Right wingers, MAGA's conservatives, Republicans are treated a different way. There is a two tier justice system in this country, but it's wealthy elites like Trump and everybody else. And case in point, Trump has had numerous gag orders placed on him during this legal journey of the last year. He's violated gag orders and he continues to be a free man. 
uh, if you or I forget about if we had this number of felony charges against us in different jurisdictions, we would not be out on bail. Forget about that. That's already one way Trump has benefited from the two tier justice system. But if we violated gag orders in the way that Trump has, we would also be sanctioned and potentially thrown in jail pending trial, but not for Trump. Here's Hannity on the new gag order saying that Trump's freedom of speech is being taken away. Now, my assertion to you is Hannity's not this stupid. Hannity realizes that limited and specific gag orders from courts are completely legal. You are not having your free speech rights taken away, but it doesn't matter because Hannity is there to suck up to Trump, not to be legally accurate. Now, Trump cannot even speak out in his own defense. He can't oh. defend himself against political attacks stemming from the indictments. Uh, of course, these conveniently handed down in the middle of an election. Um, I thought we lived in the United States of America. I thought we celebrated freedom of speech. <laughs> Is this still America? Because I'm beginning to wonder. Far left courts in this country are out of control. They're doing this more and more, silencing people and threatening people to say that they'll send them to jail if they dare speak out in their own defense. Message is very clear. If the powerful government, their bureaucrats in New York City, Washington, D.C., Fulton County, Georgia, they don't like your politics, they don't like your last name, they're going to try and put you in jail. They want to take away your property. They want to silence your dissent and ruin your life forever. Is that the country you want to live in? If Democrats are successful in 223 days in the November, this chilling system of justice that will become right, whatever, dude. We've talked about this before. There is no First Amendment or free speech violation in a gag order. There is a right to a fair trial in the United States, and there is a right to protection of privacy and limited gag orders specifically put together as reactions to things that have been said by Trump. It's not random. It's not just I don't know. Here's a gag order with a list of stuff you can't talk about. Trump is going after the judge and going after the judge's family. And so we have a balance of rights in the United States. Gag orders reflect balancing the public's right to information and of Trump's a right to speak with the individual rights of the parties involved. You can't have a defendant going after the daughter of the judge and allow that to happen. And so the limited gag order is completely constitutional. This has been looked at from a judicial authority standpoint. Judges have the authority to issue gag orders. The protection of privacy, preserving the investigations integrity and preserving the right to a fair trial are all completely valid reasons legally to put in place limited gag orders when individuals involved with trials are jeopardizing those rights. So I know Hannity knows this. I know Hannity doesn't really think that there is a First Amendment or free speech concern with a gag order. And Trump has earned the gag order, but they continue to repeat it. They continue to repeat it. They continue to repeat it. And many of their followers fall for it and they go, look at how unfairly Trump's being treated. They're taking away his First Amendment right with these gag orders. No, uh, we have judicial precedent for it. There is case law. Uh, and and that is just another way in which Trump Trumpists are being told this is all completely unfair. Hannity knows better. Shame on him for perpetuating this. But even he doesn't believe this stuff. I assure you. Follow us on social media. Interact with the David Pakman Show community. See exclusive content. See when we're taking calls live and stay up to date on other big show announcements. We post daily. Find us on Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and TikTok. It's been a very, very bad 24 hours for the failed former president. Donald Trump, in a confused moment, posting a typo riddled rant, misspelling everything, and generally speaking, making no sense. And all of it has to do with the very obvious coming to a head of the criminal charges, the election seeking the bond, the defamation lawsuits, judgments against them. This guy is very much not well. Trump posting to Truth Social, quote, I'm not running to terminate the Affordable Care Act as crooked Joe Buden disinformates and misinformates all the time. Now, those aren't really words. Uh, I'm running to close the border, stop inflation make our economy great, 
strengthen our military and make the ACA or Obamacare, as it is known, much better, stronger and far less expensive. In other words, make the ACA much, much, much better for far less money or cost to our grest American citizens who have been decimated by Biden, his record inflation, bad economy, Afghanistan catastrophe and just about everything else. Crooked Joe Biden is by far the worst president in the history of the United States. MAGA 2024. I have to admit, disinformates and misinformates were not words I was familiar with. And I know that everything's fluid and it's all just whatever anybody wants these days with language. The right likes to bemoan. But I'm not finding misinformates and disinformates in any uh, dictionary I have access to. Let me put it that way. Uh, what's the bigger story here? The story here is that if we are to believe what more and more medical experts are telling us, if we are to believe what our eyes and ears tell us when we look at a video of Trump speaking from eight years ago and we look at one from today, something is wrong. And whether it's the severe crushing impact of the stress of what Trump is facing or cognitive decline or physical decline or some combination of these or other things. I don't know what it is. I don't have to know what it is to know that this would be a lot for anyone. And this is not, oh, feel sorry for Trump. This is this would be a lot for anyone. And narcissists specifically. When all of the delusions of grandeur fall apart, and when there's no final lie to tell, they can have what is called a narcissistic collapse. This is sort of like when the pathological liars are shown your lie. I've told the story of well, I'm not even going to get into the story again because I've heard words gotten back to the person that I am probably talking about that I tell the story when I've told stories of pathological liars from my past and what happens when as a curiosity you confront them. And you confront every lie when they go a and you say, no, not a and they go, oh, 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 I meant B and you show them. Nope, it's not not B either. They go, well, I meant C when you follow it to the end, you get this collapse and it happens with pathological liars. It can happen with narcissists. That's where Trump may be headed. And that's potentially a really scary thing. We have not spoken about our old friend Mike Pillow. Mike Lindell, the CEO and founder of my pillow for a little bit. We know he's been embroiled in a lot of problems, financial problems, regulatory problems, business problems, all sorts of problems. And he's now getting evicted. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. The Star Tribune reports judge evicting my pillow from a Shakopee warehouse. I hope it's pronounced correctly that way. Or is it Shakopee? I think it's Shakopee, Minnesota. Shakopee Warehouse over unpaid rent. Landlord says Mike Lindell's pillow company has failed to pay more than two hundred thousand dollars in rent in the last two months. And he is now facing a court ordered eviction from the warehouse. A judge Tuesday said she'll approve the landlord's request to vacate the property after at least four default notices were sent to pillow over the last six months. This says that uh, they are very behind in payments, more than two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars for rent and other charges. Um, the attorney representing the company says my pillow has more or less vacated, but we'd like to do this by the book. At this point, there's a representation that no further payment is going to be made under the lease. So we want to find a new tenant. So this seems to be one of the uh, locations that pillow no longer needs slash can afford. There's a lot of really bad stuff going on with this guy. And much like with Trump, I am left wondering, was getting involved in the political space the worst decision that Mike Pillow ever made? It may have been the worst decision Trump ever made for himself and for his family. We'll find out as the trials start over the next few months. But it's really hard to imagine that this has been good for Pillow. He told me during our, our interviews he's invested or wasted, depending on your perspective, tens of millions of dollars on pursuing voter fraud, conspiracy theories and other debunked nonsense. And it's all not going well. Here is just from the last few days, Mike Pillow speaking to Steve Bannon, saying he's trying to figure out how he can get back on Fox News to advertise where he was also kicked off. 
so that he can notify everybody about the bombshell information that he found. Arizona, have you called the Fox guys and shared this information with Fox management? Have you called the Murdochs and say, hey, I found the solution. You can go get your money back. Oh, I will be doing that, Steve. That's uh, number one on my list. Um, I'm going to be doing that this week. We're doing the big push. All the media outlets, including Newsmax, by the way. I'll be re I'll be reaching out to Chris Ruddy because uh, we've got to get the word out about. Yep. So apparently he finally found the bombshell. I don't know if it was his cyber guys. I don't know if it was who it was, the packet analysts or whatever. But he has new evidence that Dominion definitely did something wrong, although he can't explain exactly what. And you might be wondering, did he ever present the evidence? He has not. And then here also over the last week, just a sad state of affairs for Pillow. Here he is in his car saying that his drug addiction center, if <laughs> oh, dear God, if you are finding yourself really upset about what's happening at the border, his addiction centers will provide counseling for people upset about the border across the border. And then people lose hope like the horrible decision in Congress yesterday. Um, when people start getting hopeless, coupled with that open border, it's deadly. And that's why people, if you have anybody out there in addiction, go to Lindell Recovery Network. Yeah, I would suggest turning off Fox News. The mental health uh, uh, benefit from that is going to be significant. So there it is. If you are stressed about the border and you just need help, you can reach out to the Mike Pillow Addiction Counseling Center. Uh, and always remember, when you see words like counselor, coach, etc., these are not licensed people. Um, these are <laughs> these are not therapists. That's I think where I will leave it. We have a voicemail number. That number is two one nine two David P. Here's an interesting voicemail. Now, this is not normally a dating show, although I'm glad to make it one if that's what people would prefer. Here's a caller laying out a scenario. He's on a beautiful date. Everything's going well. And all of a sudden, the woman he's with drops an anti transgender bomb in the middle of the entree course. What would you do? Take a listen to this and then we'll discuss. Hi, Mr. Pacman. I had a little bit of dating advice I was hoping you could help me with. Please. I consider myself, uh, you know, kind of a progressive and a trans ally and all that good stuff. Great. So I started going on a few dates with someone, and about halfway through the third date, she mentioned to me that trans is a mental illness and some other transphobic comments. Yep. And my curiosity is. Is this something I can fix or do I need to eject? Um, currently, I've been on a couple more dates and it hasn't come up again. But just curious, how far gone do you think someone who believes this is? In my opinion, it's possibly just something she's heard and doesn't really internalize. Listen, so this so, so basically the scenario is on date three, this guy's date starts uttering wildly transphobic stuff didn't mention it on dates one or two and didn't mention it on dates four and five. The question is, uh, can can she be helped or does he need to eject or abort the entire scenario? Th this is up to you, sir. At the end of the day, I, I was not there and it's completely possible that these anti trans views are not deeply and sincerely held views. It's the woman repeating something she heard and you could even potentially say, hey, listen, I really like you. Um, I think you like me. I'd love to keep seeing you. I'm just worried about something uh, because, you know, one of my things is I want to respect everybody. I, I want to treat people the way they want to be treated. And you said something that um, if there had been trans folks here, they would have been personally really upset by what you said. And as a trans ally, I'm upset by it. And sometimes people just hear things and repeat them. And if these really aren't things that are like a big deal for you, I'd love to just talk about it and maybe you'll you know, have a different perspective. But at the same time, if this is really a deeply rooted part of your identity, um, uh, then maybe, you know, whatever. it's sort of like I, I know someone who was with somebody who said some negative thing about the group that is sometimes known as gypsies or the Romani people or Roma people. And it was 
the report I got was it was said very much in passing and didn't really have any vitriol with it. And a brief conversation exposed. Oh, I didn't even I don't know anything about the Romani people. I didn't know that they're this historically marginalized and discriminated group. I didn't know about all of these anti Romani. Tri I, I had absolutely no idea. I didn't know that the word gypped is like saying Jude. I now I know and I'm I'm embarrassed that I didn't know that. And now I know. So you've got to decide. OK. And then at the end of the day, you have to decide whether whatever this woman's true views are, they are tolerable for you as someone you might want to be with potentially beyond uh, date number five. So let us know what happens. Bring it up maybe with some empathetic Socratic type questions. See where it goes and please let me know. We've got a great bonus show for you today. We'll talk about what's happening with the bridge collapse. We'll talk about the Jamie Raskin calls for hearings about Jared Kushner's influence peddling. And we will also talk about Kansas moving to join Texas and other states to require that adult websites verify the ages of users. First Amendment people are going nuts already. Has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Uh, we will discuss all of those stories and more on today's bonus show. Oh, the bonus show where you want to make money. But everybody else that makes money to fund themselves is bad. We are going to try to make a little money on today's bonus show. So please sign up at joinpacman.com. Join us. I'll see you then or be back here tomorrow.